Hey guys, welcome back to Mac Farms. I promised a video this week on doing the rims for 1394. And I've used as much procrastination time as I possibly could uh, this week before making it. I've been working on the rims, but I just haven't been in the mood, I guess, for doing a video. But anyway, uh, we're gonna do it here today. It's Saturday and the video should be out tomorrow. So this is one of the back rims and I have it in primer. Um, maybe I should explain a little bit about why I went with paint. I, I did a post there a while back asking you guys if I should do powder coat or paint and uh, I ended up doing the paint and maybe I should just talk a little bit about why um, I decided to go that route. So I think the easiest way to explain uh, kind of con the condition of these wheels and the reason why I decided to go with paint um, is to show you this one. This is, I just took the other one off. This is the other rim which I haven't uh, put the high build primer on yet. Um, these rims were pretty badly uh, pitted, like they had rusted and they were pitted. So there's all kinds of dips and hollows in them. With powder coat, um, you know, you'd have to use a special uh, filler in that to smooth everything out. And I really didn't want to have to pay somebody to, you know, put an expensive filler on and do all the sanding for me and everything. And I just thought, you know, by the time I did all that, the, the cost of doing the job would be quite high. If they were just, you know, smooth and everything, and they just had to be sandblasted and then, you know, shot with powder coat, that'd be a different story. I'd probably do the powder then. Um, but just the amount of work that had to be done before actual, you know, paint or powder coat, it just seemed to be, uh, seemed to make more sense to do it this way. So, I mean, there's quite a bit of, uh, filler work and that that's going into getting them where they are now and they're not, by no means perfect i'm not a professional at this but they're a lot better than they were anyway so i think they're going to look uh pretty good when they're all painted up i got that other one primed um as you've seen that looked not quite as bad as this one this one was the worst of the two back rims and uh yeah so anyway we'll put the high build on it later on and sand it down again then they got a sealer primer and then we're going to do a base coat clear coat on them uh, that's what i end up deciding to go with i kind of i wanted to try the the base coat clear coat system i've never painted like that before and i kind of wanted to paint the uh, hood and fenders in that base coat clear coat so i figured it'd be easier to try it on the rims first rather than the body panel so that's what i kind of decided to do so anyway it uh it's not it's not cheaper than powder coat the paint you know high quality paint's expensive too um, but the work in getting them to this stage would have been expensive so uh, like i mentioned these were sand uh, maybe i didn't mention these were sandblasted i had them sandblasted um, they actually have to come back and do the centers. I never got them to finish the center. They did one center, then they ran out of sand. So these were sandblasted, then I shot them with epoxy primer. I did my filler work on top. Um, and then now we're gonna shoot with high build, sand it down, and then uh, primer sealer. And then base coat clear coat. So for working on the rims, I actually built this here little setup. I made it a little bit too wide because it doesn't, uh, it kind of overhangs the saw horses a little bit, but I put four rollers on it. There's one here, one there, and then two on the other side. So the rim sits in it. And you can just roll the rim like that. It's not catching that one because it's a little bit crooked, but the other two are rolling. So it just makes it a lot easier to work on, even painting. Like, I mean, you'll still, you'll mark up this part, but you know, that's all right. You get the inside first, and then just paint the outside. It seems to work pretty good like that, so. Anyway, that was a pretty good idea, I thought. 
Uh, the only thing is I really need four of them, but I mean, I can't, you know, it would, I can't justify building four of them. I'll show you guys the front rims here too. I'm not gonna put them up on the stand though. So there's the two front rims. They didn't really require much work. I might do a little bit of glazing putty on them and sand them again and then do high build, but they really didn't need much. So there's the center that was sandblasted. I shut that with epoxy primer and haven't touched it since. Those two they did one side of, the other side isn't done. I never did anything with that. And that center isn't done at all. So anyway, that's the rim. That's that's in high build. I got a few runs in it, of course. Well, we can sand that down. We'll have to, we'll have to sand it down anyway. But so anyway, maybe it's a little better better look at this. It looks ugly now, but it'll look better when they get a coat of paint on it. A lot of work. A lot of work trying to get them looking half decent. But hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. Now I didn't do any video sanding or filling or anything. I might show a little bit of it later on, but just in case I don't, just imagine this. Yeah, just imagine that over and over and over again for hours on end. So I hope that gives you a rough idea of what's gone into these wheels. I'm gonna try to get this one ready to go and then hit that with uh, the high build primer and then probably try to get the front two in high build primer and then I can focus on sanding them. And then, you know, one at a time, we'll get the sealer primer on it. Kinda goes like that, so anyway. I don't know if I'll set up as a time lapse or what. I gotta go spread manure this morning, so I'm not gonna be able to get much done on it. But anyway, here we go. Well, it's pretty old end of the day now. I got my manure spreading done and whatnot, but never got much work done on their wheels. So I got a little bit of light left in the day. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding, probably. Uh, I definitely won't paint anything here tonight. Um, maybe do some painting tomorrow morning or something like that, depending on the weather. So <clears throat> anyway, I'll set the camera up as a little uh, time lapse, I guess, uh, doing some sanding and you guys can enjoy that, I guess, for now. Well, I'm set up ready to paint the first trim. I'm kind of a bit of an interesting position where I need the light from the camera so I can see what I'm doing, but I don't want to get paint on the camera. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I cleaned them off with brake cleaner just preliminarily. I'll wipe them down with uh, actual cleaner there before I paint. I just got to get the paint and the gun and all that stuff ready to go. And then I'll be back to paint. You guys can see that. I get my mask, wherever that's at. And, uh, yeah, I'll just turn the camera on and let her rip. All right, definitely running out of light. Probably should have quit while I was ahead, but anyway, I gotta get this done. So it's just high build. If it gets screwed up a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Um, when I clean these rims off the first time, I just used shop towels and brake cleaner. Now I'm gonna wipe them down with um, uh, grease and wax remover, like a pre-paint prep and uh, lint-free towels. So I'll just do one, paint it, move it out of the way, move the next one, wipe it up, paint it, move it out of the way. I got to about three quarters of a, three quarters of a cup of paint or whatever in the gun. So we'll see how far that gets us. We have to mix a little bit more, but you anyway, know, yeah, I'm just gonna flick it on to time-lapse and let it rip, I guess. Well, you can see me for now. I don't know for how long. I lost the light there when I was doing the last wheel. Uh, I did get it all painted. <sighs> probably missed a few spots, probably a few runs and others, but anyway, it's done. So, um, 
tomorrow I can start probably, hopefully, uh, do a little bit of sanding on that and then we'll do the primer. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or not, but anyway, we'll uh, pick up in the morning or afternoon or sometime when it's not tonight. Well, good morning guys, it's a new day. I was at getting tired this morning and I picked up this uh, extension light with LED, like three section light on it. You can move the things around like that. So I think that should help if I have to paint in the dark again. Might have to move the sawhorses a little bit, you know, down further, whatever, we'll see how it goes, although we can angle them a bit too, so. Anyway, we'll see how that works out when it's dark, but uh, the rims are good and dry now, so we can start doing our wet sanding and <laughs> send some of the runs out. This is the one I painted in the dark. Actually, it didn't turn out too bad. I would like to get a little bit more in, in some places and a little bit less in others, just like I thought it was going to turn out. But yeah, I picked up some 400 grit, wet and dry. So we'll uh, sand these rims, I guess, and then to be ready for the last coat of primer before uh, we do the color. I'm pretty pleased with that. Actually, it's pretty bright. I mean, it doesn't illuminate inside the rim very good just because of the placement of the light. Well, it's not bad. We can work with that, I think. We can work with that. So, I just gotta clean up this wheel a little bit and uh, we'll wet sand the front too. They're not gonna take much work anyway. And then we'll probably, um, Probably paint three of them with primer tonight and then we'll do the other one tomorrow. I think that's my plan. So, yeah, let's get at her. I suppose I should show you guys the difference the light on the camera makes too. So, the camera light helps, but I only have it really for for so long. The battery's in it and it is only so big. I mean, I could put an external battery on it, I guess, and that would make it go even longer, but. Anyway, it does help. So I think in the last clip I was priming one of these rims, or maybe it was a small two, I can't remember, but anyway, we kind of reached a bit of a pivotal moment, I guess you could say, in the in the rebuild. That's just kind of weird, but basically up until this point, you know, I painted the chassis black, which they're all black anyway. But uh, at this point, painting the rims, I could either go uh, like red for the sheet metal and then the silver and black for the rims like it was originally from the factory. Or I could go to the older Magpie color scheme with the Power Red, which is orange wheels and the Power White or Orchard White sheet metal. So um, I think I said all along I was gonna paint it Magpie. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna paint these wheels in power red which is actually orange so what we gotta do now is lightly scuff the wheels up with the 400 grit sandpaper and uh, lay some base coat and then some clear coat so i'm gonna set the camera up and do time lapse
All right, so here's that back room that I painted this morning. It's drying off nicely. Really shiny. I just sit it out here to dry. There's not too many flies and bugs in it. We did get a couple, but I mean, that's to be expected. Um, I did get a couple of runs in the clear on this one, unfortunately. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about it right now. Um, I'll probably just leave it because they're not too bad. Obviously with the clear you could sand the clear and then buff it all out and it would make it even you know nicer than it looks now, but that's a lot of work for a set of wheels. So I think we're just gonna have to live with it. It looks pretty good as is, I think. So anyway, it's uh it's dry to the touch, but it's still a little bit soft in places. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that I got one of the front ones uh, I've been working on in the garage there now and I'm just getting ready to shoot that with clear too so yeah looking pretty good so this is the one here I'm just waiting for it to finish uh, drying a little bit before I put the clear on it but anyway I just wanted to talk a little bit I'm not sure if I did or not I just want to talk a little bit about um, kind of why I decided to do base coat clear coat versus what I usually do which is like the acrylic enamel just like the factory paint and put a little hardener in it because both methods are uh, good I think but um, there's some specific reasons why I wanted to go with a base coat clear coat. So one reason I actually wanted to go with base coat clear coat over what I usually use which is just almost always the um, like factory brand acrylic enamel paint at single stage. I usually add some hardener to it. Makes it look really nice and glossy. Um, but the reason I chose to go with um, the base coat clear coat was for a couple of reasons. It is more durable. Um, you, know, you get your base coat and you got your clear coat, clear coat on top of it. So if you scratch the clear, it's not that hard to repair. And it's, you know, it's pretty durable. Although the acrylic, uh, you know, it is pretty tough paint when you get that hardener in it. But uh, the base coat clear coat is a little tougher. Um, and you know, the main reason that I went with it was just to kind of experiment and just try something different. Um, you know, I've, I've shot a lot of single stage paint, but I've never shot base coat clear coat. So it was just something I wanted to try. Um, I had planned all along to do the uh, sheet metal on the tractor, the rear fenders and the hood and side panels and that and the grill with uh, two-stage paint, base coat, clear coat. And I just wanted to try it on something else um, before I did the panel, something that wasn't, you know, as critical if it looked good or bad. You know, the rims, it's, I like to have them looking good, but they don't have to be a base coat, clear coat. I mean, you could have went with the acrylic and it would have been just fine, but, you know, it's just something I wanted to try. And I'm definitely learning some things shooting the base coat clear coat over the single stage. Um, so it's definitely been uh, a help and I think, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do a better job on the, on the panels and that when it comes time to do that uh, because of what I've learned. So, you know, the first rim I painted, it went okay. There was some mess ups in that and it was, you know, it took me a while to do it. Second rim went a little bit better um, still there are some mess ups in that and this one here is shaping up to be pretty good I mean it's not done yet there still could be something happen but you know I, I'm getting things figured out and uh, yeah it's just something different something different to try so that's kind of why I went with the base coat clear coat but I will say it's it's more money and it's a lot more work than uh, single stage and I mean I don't know it pays off I guess but it's uh, it's just something different. The only other thing I will say is that uh, factory tractor paints will be single stage. So if you're going for like a very original look and it's very important to you that it looks exactly like it did when it left the factory, then maybe single stage is the better way to go. But for me, I don't want, I'm not as particular with the finish being exactly the way it was when it left the factory. I mean, if I can improve on the finish from what it le way, from the way it left the factory, then that's fine by me. Um, 
So, I mean, you know, we're not going with the original colors of the tractor anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference, I guess, if it's not single stage paint like original and Sioux. So, the other thing is, I might get some comments about the paint being a bit light here in the center. I didn't put my finger there by mistake, but when the paint was wet, I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but like painting these rims, I mean, yeah, I gotta get some paint there, and I'll put some clear there too to seal it, but like the most important thing on the wheels is getting the inside of them looking good. Uh, you're never going to see in here anyway, so I don't really care what it looks like as long as there's some paint on it. I mean, it's got the epoxy primer on it anyway, so it's not going to rust, but you know, I still like to have a little bit of the color and the clear on there just to seal everything up and make it all, you know, the same. So, yeah, it's a little bit hard to get underneath too. Like, I painted, I did the base coat on the inside and I rolled the rim to make sure I got all the way around on the first coat. You'll, you'll have seen it in the video anyway, but then after I do the outside, I don't move it anymore because what's going on with the rollers is it'll, it rolls on this surface right here and it'll start taking the paint off. And uh, that was one of the mistakes I made on the first one. I had done the base and then I rolled it to move it to do, I don't know if it was the clear, just do another coat of base or whatever, but I took the paint off right here. And again, it's not really critical because I think the tire's going to cover it up pretty good anyway. But still, I think the first rim, I might end up just touching it up a little bit uh, where the rollers were touching it. I think maybe the ideal thing would probably be to have the rollers where they can ride in here. Because they're not really worried about what it looks like in there anyway. And then you could just paint the outsides and roll it the whole time and it wouldn't really make too much difference. So anyway. Like I said, it's all, it's all learning experience. The whole roller setup and everything, that was kind of learning experience too. Um, I'm not 100% sold on it. It works. The rollers work excellent for when you're sanding and filling and all that stuff. It's really good for that. But when it comes to painting, they're not the greatest, but it kind of feels like it's the least worst kind of thing because like I haven't really figured out another good way to hold the rims. I thought about hanging one from the rafters, but then like you're covering up some of where you want to be painting with wire. And I was worried I'd get lines in the base. So, I mean, at least this way, at least this way, I mean, most of the damage <laughs> trying to roll it or whatever is going to be on the outside anyway. And you can really focus on getting the inside good. And that's what you're going to see anyway. So yeah, like I said, just a learning experience. So I'm going to, get this rim powder uh, powder coated get this rim clear coated and i'm gonna do the other rim probably tonight or tomorrow and i'll show you guys when they're all all three all four of them i should say all four of them are done and uh, i'll get it like close up or whatever with the camera and that so you know i got that one more left you can't see it's off the camera frame there and there's a center there i never did any i did epoxy primer on it but i didn't do uh, anything else so I can fix that up and get that ready and I need to get some uh, bolts for bolting the centers onto the wheels and I need to start hurrying up and figuring out how to get the uh, lug nuts cleaned up and plated so yeah quite a few things ahead of me here and we got three other centers there that aren't finished being sandblasted yet so they'll have to be done too before we can start putting the wheels on the tractor. So I'm gonna try, I think I've, I, I come up with the idea that I'm gonna try to put the rim and the center, like as an assembly, on the tractor. And then we're gonna to try to mount the tire on it like that. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna attempt one and see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not sure. It's gonna be, Kind of a pain trying not to scratch these wheels because like I said, even this is a little bit different than what I usually do. So what I usually do is I'll break the bead on the tire and then I'll just tape around or put something in behind it so I can paint the rim. And then uh, you can just blow the tire back up. So there's no mountain dismounting to the tire. And that's a pretty easy way to scratch them doing that. But Anyway, we'll try it this way. Hopefully I won't scratch them. If I do, I might have to do a little bit of touch-ups. It's just the way it goes. So anyway, we'll uh, see what happens. 
All right, well, it's actually been a couple of days since I finished painting those wheels. They're here behind me, and I wanted to show you guys kind of the finished product, but I also got this here piece of steel, which is just a panel off of my other little 444 case project. So this is also power red. I painted this just with an aerosol can, and I mean, like it turned out pretty good for aerosol can. That's about as glossy as you can expect to get using that. Uh, you can get a little bit better painting with a with the actual spray gun, but anyway, I'll show you guys the rims here and we can do a little comparison of the colors. All right, so there they are, all four. You can see there's some spots like here where I guess I didn't get it clean quite good enough, but the clear coat stuck to it all right. Um, and yeah, I didn't really focus too much on the clear on, on the inside of the rim because it's not that important. This one here is the very first one I did. And you can see I rubbed off some of the paint right there. But I'm gonna to touch that up later. It's gonna get scratched putting them on. Anyway, the tire's on, so. And that was the last one I did right there. That one turned out probably the best. It's hard to see, but that turned out really good. But uh, yeah, so you can just have a look here. They're really, really shiny. They look really nice, so. And it's actually a pretty minimal amount of uh, dirt and flies in it. I was actually pleased with that. So anyway, here's the other panel. And you can see there's a tiny, tiny little bit of a shade difference, but it's not too bad. It's pretty hard to tell, especially on camera. So it matched pretty close. Uh, like I had the paint just mixed at Napa or whatever. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And like I said, the shine is uh, really good. So anyway, let's see if I can get some better, better shots of it. That one over there looks good too. So anyway, you know, it's about as good as I can do, I think. Um, given the equipment and that. The first one is probably the worst, but it's still not bad. There's some spots in that where the clear was a little bit light. So like if I had a rank, at least, or uh, best to worst, like that's the worst one. That one was quite a bit better. Uh, but I did get a couple of runs in that one. So then the first front rim I did was uh, really good. And then the very last one I did was almost perfect, I think. So and I did notice a slight difference um, when I was sanding these ones. So you'll see the spacing of the lugs. It's not even the spacing, it's just like the way the lugs are. There's a wider gap in between these ones. Then the ones over there at the tip of my finger, you see the very narrow gap right there. And then these ones, it's wider. So I'm not sure if this rim had been replaced at some point. Uh, that's the only one with the wider gap between the, like the lugs. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. It took me all this time to notice, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the rim painting video. We'll hopefully get some more videos soon on the 1394 project. See you in the next one.